comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. Today I would like to return to the topic of the Soviet cars, and I already made quite a few videos about Soviet cars, or we say автомобили, or машины, so automobiles or machines. Uh, so if you guys are interested in the topic of Soviet cars, uh, please check my playlist, which is called Soviet Cars. If you're not familiar with the car situation in the Soviet Union, I would like to remind you that cars were in really short supply, and the most popular Soviet car, Lada or Vaz, V-A-Z, Zhiguli, which was a clone of Italian Fiat 124, uh, they were in such a high demand that people waited up to nine years, like you had a waiting list, in order to purchase Zhiguli car. And on the top of that, they were extremely expensive. For example, in the 80s, Zhiguli was 9,000 rubles, with the average salary somewhere around 120, 130 rubles per month. So someone asked... What about spare parts, or as we call in Russian, zapchasti? It's another word that got shortened. And I forgot, someone just mentioned in my previous video, what is the official term when two words get uh, bundled into one. But uh, the word for spare parts in Russian is zapasneye chasti or zapchasti. So the question, how, what was the situation with the car spare parts in the Soviet Union. And the short answer is we had a horrible shortage of spare parts. Spare parts were a real, real deficit. But to be fair, my family and I, we never owned a car, so I never experienced all these troubles that people went through trying to get spare parts for their cars. I never cared about cars. I never cared about spare parts, I never cared about gas prices, I never cared about finding spot to park a car, find a garage, I just always use public transportation. But I can tell you a couple of interesting details about uh, spare parts and how people were protecting their spare parts on their cars. It's one thing you would notice right away if you look at the pictures from 70s, 80s, 60s, of the main Soviet cities like Moscow, Leningrad, Kiev, it's kind of really jumps at me now since I live in America for over 20 years, how empty the streets looked. I mean, even Moscow, the capital of the biggest country in the world, and its streets look quite deserted. There's not many cars on the streets. So that was the first thing you notice. But if you ever stumble upon some close shots of the Soviet car or some street uh, photo, like when you see a car close, you might notice instant detail that cars didn't have wipers. I mean, you had those arms where you installed the wiper, but the actual wipers, they'll be missing. And then if you see the... Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything video-wise, but picture this, so they'll be street cars driving and suddenly it starts raining so what first thing would happen in the soviet union with the soviet drivers everyone will pull the side stop the car then they will remove their wipers out of the glove compartment install their wipers and they start driving so this is kind of first cute i would say cute detail about soviet drivers Everyone was hiding their wipers. You would never ever leave your wipers on your car, even if you like park the car by the store to go get bread or a bottle of vodka. You take those wipers off and you put them in the glove compartment. You never leave them installed on the windshield because they will get stolen right away. Because car wipers were really, really deficit. They were really hard to find. It was almost impossible to buy. Another item was in high demand and which was stolen quite often from the cars would be the outside mirrors. So quite a few cars had only one mirror outside and 
that was pretty easy to remove. So also the driver, if you parked overnight, you know, you take the wipers, put put inside of your car in a glove compartment, you snap uh, off your uh, rear view mirror outside one by the door, and you also put inside the car to lock it up. Another item that people uh, try to protect is the car stereo. So in Soviet cars, like in Lada's, uh, it was easy to remove. And so if you pull somewhere to do some shopping, you know, you remove wipers, you put in a glove compartment, then you pull out the stereo and that's you walk with it. You even don't want to leave the stereo in your car. You just take it with you to the store and you just carry it around you know, while you're shopping. Then, of course, people were stealing wheels. But that usually, you know, it won't happen right in the open. So if you park somewhere in a busy shopping area, you're safe. But if it's somewhere you parked overnight, there's a chance that your wheels will be removed and you're going to find your car sitting on the wood blocks or something like that. I didn't know that, but I discovered when I was preparing uh, for this video that even windshields were a popular item to steal. Apparently on a Jiguli car, if you're real good professional, so two guys can remove, pop your windshield glass in 60 seconds. Uh, so what many people did, they actually uh, engraved some kind of big letters or some number uh, so it will be trackable. Or some desperate people would crack the windshield glass on purpose so people won't touch it. So this is bizarre but yeah even uh windshield glass was a, a item that people were trying to steal and now to the main story uh, of this video and you may already uh, heard about it because apparently it was a uh, all over the internet uh, it happened in georgia but not the uh, american georgia and soviet georgia um, in Tbilisi, which is the capital of georgia so this guy uh rizzo and Okidze, he purchased a Jiguli Lada model 2106, and it was one of the most popular models that uh, they made. He bought it in 1991. Just a quick uh, comment, that car, the 2106 model, was produced from 1976 till 2006 basically unchanged. For, for 30 years they made exactly the same car. There's another beauty of the uh, socialist economy you have no incentive to upgrade your models and change models because if people waiting for 90 years to buy a car why would you bother even to spend money and change improve upgrade models you just crank the same model so they made uh, Shistorka they call it the six model 2106 for 30 years and they produced 4.3 million of Lada cars, that 2106 Lada. So I can only imagine how happy was Comrade Anukidze when he brought home this beautiful blue Lada. And guess what happened? First night, wheels got stolen. So this guy got so upset that he decided to hide the car till better days, till better times, because 1991, that's pretty much Soviet Union it was about to collapse. Uh, things were pretty bad. So what he did, and that's hard to believe, he hired a crane and he put his car on the balcony of his building. So he lived on the fourth floor. Uh, so he somehow reinforced the balcony, made it bigger, and he parked his car without wheels up there on the balcony and he said i'm just gonna keep it here till uh situation improves and people will stop stealing stuff so he waited for better days for 27 years and then he passed away better days never came comrade and the kids have passed away so his relatives uh who took over his apartment uh, decided to get rid of the car, so they sold it off to some collector, hired a crane again, and they brought that car down, which kind of became local attraction. It was actually like a tourist trap. Hey, would you like to see a car up on the balcony on the fourth floor? 
So that's pretty interesting how he was uh, so upset. Said first night, can you imagine, brand new car, you're all excited, you want to take it for a drive, next morning you come outside and wheels are missing. So as you see, it was a quite a challenge to be a car owner in the Soviet Union. And I remember reading here and there, uh, some actually, some of my viewers posted a comment a long time ago that he was in Crimea during the Soviet days and driving through the mountains. And that was a really scary experience because brakes basically didn't work on a car and he found out that there was a shortage of braking pads and rotors in the Soviet Union. So this guy basically had hardly any brakes left on his car and he couldn't buy any more uh, any new brake pads. And also, if you remember my story about taxi drivers in the Soviet Union, uh, part of that story, the new uh, taxi driver guy, was he got in that uh, situation that started raining and he couldn't drive because the wipers weren't installed and he didn't know uh, why. And only then he, when he came back back to the taxi park, older guys told him like, what, it's under your seat. You don't have, you, you don't want to have your wipers on your car all the time because they'll get stolen. And as I mentioned earlier, we never had a car in my family, so I never cared about all these problems, all these troubles. The only interest I had in cars back in the day, for some reason, and I was a hardcore nerd, I had a hobby of writing down, like collecting unusual license plate numbers. So that would be my thing. I'll just go for a walk, and I just, if I see a car out of town, they'll have a different license plate number. I'll write it down, like car model, a color, and the license plate number. And that was my, uh, I collected not actual license plates. My goodness, if I'll be collecting those old-fashioned license plates, probably be worth quite a bit of money right now. But I was just keeping record uh, of unusual license plates that I saw here and there. And uh, I even have this little... I think I did pretty good job on here uh, making a record of the cool license plates that I saw. Well, I hope you enjoyed this show and you may learn something new. In the end of this video, I would like to thank everyone who supports my channel through Patreon as well as uh, PayPal. Thank you guys so much. It's really appreciated. And uh, thank you for your support. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 